Tim, it's me, it's CD, coming from the Spillman channel. Today's video, I'm gonna be breaking down the sample I made. Um, it's kind of like dark vibe, sort of, a little bit spooky. I made it around Halloween, so I was a little bit influenced by that. Basically, with this sample, I tried to keep things simple, tried to keep it textured, uh, really just make it usable for like a bunch of different artists. Because if you think about it, you want you want all these placements. You can make stuff that's like super specific, like a young boy, like Wawa type. You know what I mean? You can make like super specific loops if you have that direct connection, but if you don't, best thing to do is try to keep it a little bit more broad, a little bit more like something you could hear multiple people on. So yeah, I'm gonna play the sample real quick and then I'm gonna break down the layers, processing all that. So yeah, let's get to it. Yeah, so pretty simple, but still hard, still cool. All right, so the first thing I did is I got these keys for my one-shot kit. Pretty simple. Um, I don't know a ton about theory, but I know that these three notes being close together gives the sample like some tension. This is, I'm not even gonna try out the chord, but just know, I kind of clicked in notes, you know, I was just, and originally I think I had them like arped out and I was like, you know, just put them together like kind of a chord and then just strum it a little bit so it sounds cool. And then for the bass, this bass gives it a lot of like bounce and just kind of a weird vibe. I don't know the theory behind it. I just clicked in the notes that I thought sounded good. So this little part right here adds, um, definitely adds like a lot of variation. It's just something simple, but stands out and kind of switches up the bounce from like bump, bump. Or like at least on the one and then it like moves it over a little bit which is like just enough to give this sample some bounce so basically for this chord i just kind of switched up a little bit just copied this note down took this one out this note kind of sets up better for this note so it can go back so it's like and it like makes it a little bit easier to get back to this chord um then with this it's just like i know it's like diminished or some shit, but it's just when there's like two like a whole set between all these notes it sounds like mysterious and then it gets back here, but yeah. Next thing I did was I got this sine wave and I think I did some weird shit with this. I actually reversed it and like kind of chopped it up a little bit and pulled the stretch up. Basically just plays like the same chords, but for the first two, it's like down an octave, for the second two it's up. So it sounds like this. And then it cuts off here, which is important because then it's like, there's like the build up and then it just immediately cuts off and then i have like these these things playing when the chords stop but i'll get into those later but yeah basically that's all the sine wave is next we got this bell pretty simple it's just like a texture to kind of emphasize like the one like wherever the 808 would be dropping and shit like that doesn't sound appealing on its own but mixed with the other things it kind of gives it some cool texture uh then we got this bell pretty simple it's just Something simple, just to kind of add some more uh, ambience, a little bit more, a little bit more like melodic component than just having like the same chords and stuff. And I got this like weird flute, this NASA flute, uh, one shot, sounds like this. Again, just kind of a textury thing to add a little bit of variation, I guess. Add like another sound to take in and leave out. Uh, then we got this bass. And this bass is honestly more like a texture too, just kind of like a buzzy sound. Uh, I think in the master I actually like EQ'd out a lot of the bass, just because I kind of wanted it in there, just for like a little bit of balance, because it's a little bit more hard hitting than like the bass notes of this piano. After I had all these, I was like, all right, need some um, some little accents, so I got this, which kind of like leads into the the second half of the sample. or like kind of builds up before the drop on the one. And I just have that playing here cause it could have been like, like I want to overdo it. But next thing I added, uh, it's like this piano roll cut and I like it's from the XY kit and basically just has like a descending piano. And then that's what I was talking about earlier where like these aren't playing, this comes in 
and kind of throws the listener off and it just sounds cool it's like your candy type stuff but yeah after that was all done i just kind of rendered it out but yeah i just kind of arranged it took out the accents for this part took out the bass for the rest of the sample took out the bells added this back in took out some of these little accents just kind of you know just did my thing and then rendered that all out i pitched it down two then i went on 14 do my classic sample master chain basically what's on this i feel like i've explained this in like every tutorial i've done but i'll play i'll play what it sounds like before and after and then after Basically, just pitch it down too, put it on this, ignore this, it's turned up. Uh, Alter Boy, Hard Tuner, Negative 3, Quantize, turn the mix down. This gives it like a little bit more of like a weird sort of distorted feel with the pitches and stuff. Just kind of adds that like vintage feel. Then we got Effect Rack, basic vintage punch, just a little bit like, I don't know, like runs into like an amp simulator, gives it sort of a more of a vintage feel is the name suggest it's like let's turn that down now we got this eq took out like some of the bass some of the sub and then boosted this and then we got this sketch cassette basically you can copy these settings just made a little bit worn ran it through the cassette emulator turn up the saturation a little bit uh, compression some dropouts nothing crazy but yeah you can copy this setting if you want Finally, just took out everything below 30 hertz and a little bit of the super high end. Make it sound a little bit older. And as I've talked about, you never need shit below 30 hertz in samples, in my humble opinion. That's pretty much all there is. Um, I forgot to mention, I actually used like three or four sounds. Actually, it's like three or four sounds from my one shot kit, the Torre. Uh, it's out now. Had a lot of good feedback from it. I've been using it a lot. So if you want to get that, the link was in the description. Comes with a ton of stuff. I don't know the exact numbers. It's probably like 200 sounds, all like usable, just like weird, kind of unique, like process sounds. So if you're not good at processing, don't have to worry about it. You can just get those drag them in they're already kind of processed maybe just like eq and level them a little bit but yeah that'll be in the description below um if you enjoyed this video like subscribe you know you know all that uh but yeah it's been cd i will see you guys in the next video peace out